Here is your in-hand look at Springer. But first, let's take a look at the instructions. Keep in mind that this is a triple changer, so he has three different modes. Transformation between each mode might take a little time, so just be aware of that. Let's start off with the front of the booklet here. And I'm gonna start off on the top. This starts off with how each of the accessories works. Comes with a handful of accessories that can be placed in his hands, stored on his body, and this specifies that. In this review, I'll be showing you guys each one of these as well. So you'll get to see an in-hand look at that as well. There's a look there. And now we have the transformation. If you're familiar with Transformers, you guys should be able to figure this out fairly easy. However, beginners might be a little bit more complicated for you. Next up, we have a look here. There's a look at the tank. And the accessories, the sword can be placed right on top there. Second half here. And there is your look at the third mode. Here is your in-hand look at Springer. He is a retool from the War of Cybertron Siege Springer, which I have, but unfortunately that is in storage at the moment and I was not able to easily acquire it for this review, so my apologies. There are also some new parts which give him the best likeness to the cartoon that we've ever gotten before. So I think overall this is the best Springer figure ever released. As you can see, the attention to detail is just phenomenal. The 86 line has been really my favorite Transformers G1 line of all time so far. The likeness on him is stellar. Here's a look at all sides. The Autobot logo is on his chest and he's painted in G1 accurate colors, which is pretty cool. Here is a closer look at the head sculpt and I think they, they nailed the likeness very well, the facial details, the blue eyes. There is definitely a lot to love about this figure. The shoulder pads are slanted, which is a nice touch. The wheels can also move, as you can see here, as well as on here, as well as on the legs back here. So that's pretty neat. His right form holds a tiny little blaster, which you guys can see here. Here is a closer look at that. It is only on the right side. The left side does not have this. And this is on a swivel joint, so you can lift it up and down. Here is a closer look at this first sword. This splits apart to create the propellers for the helicopter, but it can close and become a sword. Here is another look at the sword. Some of the accessories can be stored on the back, and here is a look at the sword stored at the center of the back. You can do this by placing the peg joint on the sword, right on the hole on the back there, and some of the accessories can be placed on here, and I'm gonna be demonstrating that in this review. Here is a look at the other sword. The metallic silver on this one really shines. Here is another look at the sword. This sword can also be placed on his back as shown, the same way as the other sword. Here is a look at him holding both swords. Here is a look at the hammer. On this side, there is a Autobot shaped logo, which you can see here. Here is another look at the hammer. On both sides, you have this flat piece, which is kind of like a real hammer. And on the other side here, you have the peg, so you can plug it into the back. Here is another look at the hammer. This time I went ahead and put the sword in. 
The hammer can also be stored on the back. And first, you're going to want to move these two pieces over on the side as shown. The instructions in specifies that. The hammer has a peg on there and there is a hole on the back. So you just plug that in. I believe that this is a torpedo and it can be placed on his hand by first opening both hands as the instruction specifies. And there is a peg on the fingers for the back of this torpedo to be plugged into. So he basically holds onto it like that and then it just rests on the other arm. It doesn't stay on too well. If you touch it, it probably will fall off. So just be aware of that. The torpedo also has a peg on the side to be plugged into the back. And here is a look at that. Here is a look at his largest blaster. There are two additional blasters which are smaller. This one is the larger one. Here is a look at the blaster in the other hand. This blaster can be placed on his back the same way. Here's a look at those smaller blasters. Each one has a unique sculpt to it. Here is another look at these blasters. Here is a look at multiple accessories on the back. I've shown you guys how it looks individually. However, you can place up to three accessories as shown in this clip here. Springer's articulation is basically standard for this modern age of Transformers figures. This includes a swivel head, good range of motion here, swivel hinge shoulders, swivel elbows here, swivel wrists, although this wrist could accidentally pop off kind of easy, so just be aware of that. He has a swivel waist, swivel hinged hips, knees on the back, these are hinge joint, and the feet are also on a swivel joint, and I've been going along in this review, I've just been lifting them up a little bit just to get them to stand up much straighter. Here is a look at Springer's tank mode. This is a phenomenal sculpt. I think Hasbro's basically nailed it. The transformation might be a tiny bit off and I do apologize for that, but it wasn't an easy transformation, even with decades of experience. Here is a look at all sides. And of course, a look at the back. On the roof, he can hold two of his accessories. Here is a look at the largest blaster that just snaps right into the top of the roof here. The other accessory is the sword and it can also be placed right on the roof. Here is a look at that. And finally, here is a look at Springer's helicopter mode. This is a little bit difficult, so you're gonna to wanna to take your time with the transformation and it is pretty detailed. The propeller really does spin, which is a nice touch. Again, the propeller is the sword. You just split it in half. I showed you guys earlier on in this review. In both vehicle modes, the Autobot logo is on the front here. And here is a look at all sides. Overall, Springer is a phenomenal figure. I highly recommend you guys pick him up. He is the most G1 accurate toy that we're probably ever going to get. So you're definitely going to want to add him to your collection. Thank you again to site sponsor Big Bad Toy Store for sending him along for a view. It's greatly appreciated. To buy him and additional figures, please use our hyperlinks off of ToyHypeUSA.com or check out the links in the YouTube description below. I am Anthony Scott at ToyHypeUSA.com, thanking you for watching this video, and stay tuned for more news and reviews.